Tonight, I'm Lisa Lord, and in our news, a major new investment as the way is clear for a superstore to be built. The Anglican Church confirms that exorcisms happen right here in Barbados. No serious concerns about Barbadians bleaching their skin. An agricultural initiative launched aimed at reducing the country's food import bill. And in sports, Queen's College and St. Michael run things in BSAC's Frank Blackman Zone. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC Newsnight, starting now. Well, a major groundbreaking ceremony took place at Kendall Hill in Christchurch this afternoon. It represents new investment in Barbados at a time when the country needs it most. It comes in the form of a mega store that already has a presence in the region, mostly in French-speaking territories. And Barbados will be the first English-speaking country where it is looking to operate. Our Ryan Broom is on location and there's still some post-groundbreaking activity at the site. Good evening, Ryan. Hi. Hi, good evening, Lisa. Yes, I'm here at Kendall Hill, where the Koiman Holdings is, is starting a new mega construction store. It's valued at about this. The investment is going to be about U.S. 14 million dollars, and it's going to. It's, the groundbreaking was this month. The, the construction phase is going to start. They're going to be in the steel structure in about May, and it's projected to employ about 250 people uh, during that construction phase. And then when it opens, projected again the first quarter of next year, if they expect between 100 and 120 people will be involved, employed. About 5% of those will be non-nationals. However, they're looking to have 100% Barbadians employed over the long term. Now, to talk just briefly about this project with me is CEO of Coyman Holdings, Herbert Van de Wood, uh, here with me right now this evening. Sir, good evening. Good evening to you. Now, tell me about why Barbados? Why did you choose Barbados for this project? Well, um, uh, Koiman has been in, uh, in business for almost 80 years now, and uh, we have uh, quite a, a, a large market share in our uh, home markets. So we've been uh, out looking for possibilities to expand into the region, visited quite some islands, and um, well, quite, quite, quite fast we came to the conclusion that Barbados it must be for, for several reasons. Uh, one of them being uh, Barbados being a, a stable uh, economy, uh, I know we're having uh, an economic downturn at this time, but uh, we have a lot of confidence in uh, the government, uh, the, the current government, uh, being able to turn that around. Um, uh, it's, it has a quite a large GDP. Uh, for us, that's important, to, of course, as uh, as business uh, business persons. Um, but Barbados also has a large population of uh, 290,000, which is almost double of uh, the population that we already have in our four existing markets. Uh, but for us also, it's very important that uh, Barbados has a lot of uh, stable institutions. For instance, you have a fair trade regulation, you have a very well-educated uh, community, a very well-educated uh, uh, workforce. Um, you are high on the Transparency International list of uh, anti-corruption uh, uh, countries. For us, that's important because honesty and integrity is for us one of our main core values. Um, and uh, we also did a study, of course, a market study, and we think there's possibilities, there's room for a concept that we, exp that we operate in our existing markets. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, like I said, Lisa, one thing very unique about this store is that we'll, it will have a, a drive through that's under roof. I know we have drive throughs here, obviously fast food drive throughs and a couple of banks. But this store, as Mr. Van Wood has told me earlier, will have a, a drive through, uh, a drive through uh, pickup for the hardware store, which will indeed be unique. But, so that's reporting from Kendall here in, 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 in Christchurch, where Koiman Holdings has broken ground with Prime Minister Mia Amor Mar evening for this uh, Fort US $14 million project. Ryan Broom, back to you, Lisa. Thank you so much, Ryan. Now, ever since the video showing a young girl being tied around the neck and waist went viral over the weekend, the phenomenon of exorcism has been on the lips of many Barbadians. Our Shane Jones carried an extensive story on the incident that happened on Sunday, and he's back again tonight. Now, this time, he's looking at the religious aspect of it. Good evening, Shane. Hi, good evening, Lisa. Well, you're absolutely correct. Social media has been saturated with comments about exorcism, different faiths and beliefs, 
If it does indeed happen in the established churches of Barbados, it's just so many questions. And what we've found out, Lisa, is that people really don't know much about the subject. But there's just a lot of speculation. So I sought out a man of the cloth. Now, while he disagreed with the methods used in the video, rector in charge of Christ Church Parish Church, Canon Austin Carrington, confirmed that exorcisms do take place in Barbados. Take a look at part of this exclusive interview I had with him just a few hours ago. Exorcism is that practice in Barbados? How how um, familiar is Barbadian uh, Barbadians with that? I believe it is. I don't claim to be very involved in that area of ministry, but the established religions tend to have an exorcist, someone upon whom we can call in a situation where we deem that a person is demon possessed. But it is not something that we look for every day, because I find now that today, people are explaining every little bit of strange behavior, or what we might call strange behavior, as a demon possession. Um, so it's not something with which I'm very familiar, but I know that exorcism has been in the church for many years. Coming out of this story, uh, Canon. You've been hearing of a lot of different religions and sects, especially um, one of the ones that have been identified in this particular story is Wicca. Um, from where you sit, um, is the Anglican Church aware of these religions and movements in Barbados? I believe so. For myself, I was made aware of this religion because I did a little bit of reading on it because of the video itself. Um, but I think it is something that perhaps we would need to discuss collectively as members of the clergy in the Anglican Church. But certainly we find that people are now moving away from the traditional religions and dabbling with things which are not necessarily uh, safe, I think, for them or helpful or useful. Uh, they want new things, new thrills, and new beliefs, but they must be very careful what they get themselves into. Well, Lisa, while following and investigating the story, I was able to actually cross paths with a woman who identified herself to me as a Wiccan first degree priestess. A preliminary online search will tell you that Wicca is also termed as pagan witchcraft and is a contemporary pagan new religious movement. She told me she did not want to appear on camera in fear of being targeted. However, she was very passionate in the defense of her tradition. What's interesting is that she said she was disgusted by the video on social media, claiming that the most important tenet of Wiccan faith system is to harm none, adding that they do not perform exorcisms. She stressed that no matter what someone claims they are, people should judge them based on their behavior. And now this is a direct quote from the Wiccan priestess. She says, true Wiccans simply do not tie up people with rope and drag them anywhere against their will to cast out demons. We simply do not do it. There you have it, Lisa, some pretty dramatic stuff that points to a national conversation that I believe must be had. Back to you. A lot of interesting information there, Jane. Thanks so much. Well, there's a serious concern about the level of skin bleaching across the island. And the problem is so severe, it's prompted the Barbados Drug Service to organize a lecture on the practice. It was held at the Lloyd Erskine Sanford Center last night. And them a bleach, them a bleach out them skin, them a bleach, fi look like a brown in them a bleach, them a bleach out them skin, them a bleach, fi look like a brown in Bleaching, it's more common than you think, and more dangerous than you may imagine. That's why this seminar on the topic Love Your Skin, The Dangers of Bleaching was held. Dermatologist Dr. Andrew Ford sees the effects of bleaching in his practice. He says there are various reasons why people bleach their skin some merely superficial when you look at magazines or you watch the TV or you watch a, a video uh, you know a music video generally lighter skinned people are featured more than than others and it seems like they're the people who you know are focused on more and are of more importance uh, in the, in terms of of that, then some people would say, well, maybe I look better when I'm lighter than when I'm darker, so I'm going to try to be lighter because it's a beauty statement that I'm making. 
And similarly, some people just do it because, you know, it's, it means nothing, just like for the dance hall artists that we saw earlier, it's just a fashion statement. My complexion is better than ever. Me now go bleach it out, so. It's better, yes, it's better than ever. There are six skin types, ranging from the fairest to the darkest. And the main difference is the amount of melanin in the skin. That melanin is very important. This melanin that's in the skin gives us protection from the ultraviolet rays which are, are beating down on us every day. So for the very light-skinned individual, they tend to burn much more than they can tan, and that goes in sequence and in variation from there to the darkest person who can tan very well and tends to burn very infrequently. Now, as the melanin is reduced, the skin is more exposed to the sun's harmful UV rays, which makes people more susceptible to diseases like cancer. But that's not the only side effect of bleaching. One of the more common ones is thinning of the skin, which is also called atrophy. So instead of having thin skin that's a certain thickness, it becomes thinner. So of course, if your skin is thinner, your protective barrier is thinner and you're more prone to being injured or you know the skin doesn't heal properly or if you get a cut you can't stitch it together properly. Uh, stretch marks are, are a common permanent <coughs> side effect as well and that's a kind of a splitting of the skin underneath but going quite deep and you know the skin is disfigured permanently with a stretch mark. A lot of us get stretch marks physiologically just from growing as you as you get to puberty and the skin starts to and the body starts to develop more and develops so rapidly you can naturally get stretch marks, but, but steroids cause that to happen more often and increase hair growth. Putting a steroid on an, on an area for too long makes you get more hair. It's not a cure for baldness, but certainly it's, it's a side effect that produces a very thin hair that, you know, isn't very desirable. And small blood vessels and bruising, that's another uh, side effect that we don't like. Dr. Ford says skin bleaching products are part of a multi-billion dollar industry and because of their harmful effects, measures may need to be put in place to ensure that they are policed and not so easily accessible. What's Trending is brought to you by Trident Insurance. We treat you like family. We say hello now to Sharika Griffith in our social media corner to tell us what is trending. Good evening to you, Sharika. Good evening to you, Lisa, and welcome to What's Trending. Now, yesterday we heard some alarming figures about obesity, especially among children. Well, as Whitney Houston says, the children are our future. So it's no surprise that many Barbadians are in favor of policies supporting healthy environments in schools. The figures were brought to light in a cadres poll commissioned by the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados. Let's find out what some of our Facebook followers think. Well, Gerald Matthew believes a change in diet is key. He's offered some advice. Stay away from processed foods. Jared Sartori says if more fast food restaurants are open, in a few years, we'll definitely be paying a price with our health. Now, recently, there have been complaints about the increasing number of monkeys here in Barbados. Well, Jamaicans are having a similar problem, but with deer. That's right. Deer can be found in a few Caribbean territories, like St. Kitts and Nevis, although they're hardly seen there. However, a group of kitticians could now be facing charges for capturing one. And please note, this upcoming video may be disturbing to some viewers. And he alive and well. A lot of chicken to play. Now the video you just saw will, was uploaded to Facebook and it caught the attention of many residents including St. Kitts and Nevis Ambassador John L. Powell. The ambassador said he was very troubled by the video as the deer appeared to be hurt. He's questioning why people would capture and torture the animal especially since it was endangered in St. Kitts and Nevis. Powell says by being in possession of the deer, the people in the video were committing an offense under the National Conservation and Environment Protection Act. And the penalty for that 
could be a fine of up to $5,000 and or three months in prison. Now, following the tragic crash of an Ethiopian Airlines flight on Sunday, many airlines and countries across Europe and Asia have decided to ground the Boeing 73 MAX 8 plane, which was involved in that crash, and another one just a few months ago. Well, Canada and the U.S. have now followed suit. U.S. President Donald Trump made the announcement earlier this afternoon. Any plane currently in the air will go to its destination and thereafter be grounded until further notice. So uh, planes that are in the air will be grounded if they're the 737 MAX will be grounded upon landing at the destination. Uh, pilots have been notified. Now, I've always been taught that it's a good thing to lend a helping hand to those in need. But take a listen to this next story. It shows that, unfortunately, sometimes you have to be more careful before helping people. In the case of this woman, police say her sob story doesn't add up. She was wearing a high-end pocketbook, had an iPhone on her, an expensive iPhone, dressed very well. Her sign reads, quote, I have one baby. Please, in the name of God, help me to buy baby stuff and diapers. She then admitted that she that's not her child in the picture. Police say after questioning her further, the woman admitted she's part of a larger group of panhandlers who are being dropped off at various locations in the New Jersey suburbs to collect cash. Well, that's all the time we have for what's trending this evening. Remember, you can send your comments to our WhatsApp numbers at 233-7388 or 233-7555. However, Facebook and Instagram have been having some technical issues today. You may not be able to reach us there. However, you can send an email to our email at nca at cbc.bd. But please remember, wherever you reach out to us, to keep your comments clean. And we'll see you tomorrow for another look at what's trending. Lisa? Thank you so much, Sharika, as always. The Ministry of Agriculture will launch a major initiative in the coming weeks as part of efforts to increase production and lower the import bill. It will involve, among other things, the training of thousands of Barbadians in all areas of farming. Sean Farrell reports. Logan Watson is the owner of Organics. He operates a fully automated hydroponics farm in a 40-foot container at Halton Plantation in St. Philip. Currently, he can produce between 600 to 800 heads of lettuce weekly. The demand is, is extremely high, and I can see probably if I had another five to eight containers, even that would not be enough. Um, and that would also help reduce us having to import lattices that we currently are in. Expansion plans include additional containers and solar photovoltaic energy. Mr. Logan was speaking after a tour of the farm by agriculture officials who are continuing to look for ways to use technology to lower the food import bill. One of the things that we discussed yesterday is the possibility of having these containers put out into communities where we develop a type of community or urban agricultural setting, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I don't like to use the word the boys on the block, but where people who live, live in these communities can come together and, and do their own farming and produce their own crops and set up their own crops or whatever you want to do and sell. And since it's, it's, it's sealed off, I mean, some, some pretty losses will have to come with a bump to blow up the container. <laughs> and, then, and then you destroy the container as well as the crop. So it's, it's fairly secure, so that's a kind of a measure against uh, pretty larceny. The initiative will also include a training element to be rolled out in a few weeks. We are hoping to roll out over a three years period, I think it is. About 2,000 farmers who will be properly trained and equipped to come out and get involved in agriculture. Not just the traditional way, but the contemporary way. Discussions have also been held with the BADMC to manage the program and ensure the farmers have a market for their produce. Sean Farrell, CBC News. Well, Barbados is ensuring its legislation is up to par to curb the activities of the criminal elements. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator Dr. Jerome Walcott is standing by the new Proceeds and Instrumentalities of Crime Bill 2019, which is now before the Senate. He says that gun violence has increased, with some benefiting from the sale of firearms coupled with money laundering. Dr. Walcott, who is the leader of government business, says that such activities should not be left to fester. We all know in this chamber and recognize that if left uncontrolled and unchecked, this can lead to extensive societal decay in Barbados. 
and indeed can have some devastating consequences to our economy at a time when we are struggling, so to speak, in terms of coming to grips with or their economic situation. This bill is another measure being put in place by the government to put breaks on the activities of the criminal element. Meanwhile, opposition Senator Caswell Franklin welcomes efforts by the government to go after the financiers of the drugs trade who employ young Barbadians. Though he supports some aspects of the bill, he is concerned about the unexplained wealth order. The person who will institute proceedings under Section 135 is the Attorney General. <coughs> the Attorney General is a political person. I'm not speaking about the current Attorney General. I know him to be a good man, and he will not do the wrong thing. But we do not legislate for the current person. We legislate for Attorney General. Let's say the government changes at the next election.